Hello everybody, I'm Daniel from Space Doc, and I want to talk about how to write a space battle. This is something that sci-fi writers for TV in particular seem to have down to a science in the 90s, though the art seems to have been somewhat lost recently, in favour of more spectacle over substance. Hopefully by breaking down some of the things that I appreciate in a well-written space battle, I can help out some prospective sci-fi writers who might be watching, and I'd love to hear what you guys think below. But let's get right into it. First of all, if you are a prospective sci-fi writer and you want to write an excellent space battle, the first thing you need to do is watch three movies. The Hunt for Red October, Master and Commander, and Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. It wouldn't hurt to also watch the RDM 2004 Battlestar Galactica, especially any episodes featuring both Galactica and Pegasus. The reason you need to watch all of these things is because you need to learn that tension is better than action, and fewer ships is better than more. To get people properly invested into a space battle, the audience needs to understand and care about each ship. They need to know their names, they need to know where they are, they need to know what they're up against, what they can do, what their limitations are. It should all be clearly defined. It shouldn't be necessary for the audience to read a technical manual or whatever. This should be very apparent. The fact that the Battlestar Pegasus is a superior ship to the Battlestar Galactica is evident to any audience member, even without reading any background material. When there are fewer ships involved, the audience can understand the geography and the stakes and the scale of the battle. It doesn't become this giant soup of a million ships in one place, and it allows the viewer to follow along with what's going on, having a clear understanding of it all, and staying fully invested. It stops it from just being a giant screensaver that you're waiting to end for the next dialogue scene to come up. In a segue from dialogue, onto the next important point. These ships have people in them, and there can't be a disparity between the interior bridge shots and the exterior CG shots or model shots. Making it clear that there is an apparent danger to the people in these ships at all times is the best way to maintain the threat. Good examples of this, the Battle of Thoth Station from The Expanse, where we can see PDC rounds whizzing through the Rossi's interior during the battle. The Battle of Azati Prime from Star Trek Enterprise is a fantastic sequence in clear, wonderfully lit CGI where we can see all of the battle damage and all of the crazy horror and the fires in the engine room and everything. It's all very real. The beginning of Star Trek 2009 is also excellent with the destruction of the USS Kelvin. Just making it clear that these people are in a tin box that's being hammered with weapons in the vacuum of space is very, very important. Again, you don't want scenes inside a ship, screen saver of a space battle. They need to be the same thing in the same place. Further to this, shields. I don't like shields. I understand the necessity for them in fiction, but they exist because people back in the day didn't want to have to damage their studio models. You can convince the audience that the Enterprise is in serious danger by having people shout the shields are at 5% without it being necessary to take a Zippo lighter and burn some holes into the Enterprise model that cost however many tens of thousands of dollars and hopefully maintain the illusion of serious stakes. This is no longer necessary. We live in the world of CGI, so if the ship gets hit, it should get damaged, and it shouldn't be magically fixed between episodes like the USS Voyager always was, and that was in the age of CGI. They could have done something about it, at least in the second half of that show. They just chose not to. There's nothing tense about people shouting percentages these days. We can do better than that. And I always thought it was quite amusing that Star Trek was so addicted to this status quo that they didn't know how to write any other way. So even when they got to Star Trek Enterprise, where they don't have shields, they had to make up whole polarization, which is just an excuse for people to shout percentages again, even though there's no shields. People actually shout, we've lost hull plating in that show. If you've lost hull plating, the ship's gone. Like, the hull plating is the walls. Moving on, space fighters. You can put space fighters in the setting if you want, but they need to be recognized as their own separate kind of space combat that can be tense and well executed when carefully thought out. Uh, Scar, the episode of Battlestar Galactica, is an excellent example of this. It uses G-Force and people suffering from kind of blackouts and turns and stuff. The show does that a lot, but the fighters operate on their own set of rules that have been carefully developed by the world builders. They're not just smaller versions of the big ships. If fighters are inappropriate for your setting, don't use them. They're not there in the Expanse, and they're largely not there in Star Trek, and it works. To the point where it looked really weird when Star Trek Discovery suddenly broke out loads and loads of attack flyers or whatever in that one space battle, but we'll talk about that later. The fighters should be interesting viewpoints. There should be some kind of threat and tension behind them. They shouldn't just be an excuse to thoughtlessly throw more stuff onto the screen. That'll make the battle worse, not better. The Battle of the Ionian Nebula from the third season of Battlestar Galactica is an excellent example of a mixed warship and fighter sequence, because we get to see through the eyes of Anders and Selix as they're flying around the mess of that battle, and it's also made very clear that the fighters are destroying missiles to protect the civilian ships, so they have an important involvement in the battle, and the stakes are very clear. Another fantastic example is with Ivanova in the battle in Severed Dreams in the third season of Babylon 5, 
which is one of the best put together space battles ever, as she's out there for the purpose of morale because they've forced all of the people on the crew to go out and fight this battle against their own people, and it's largely the senior staff who conspired to make this happen, so she has to go out and show the flag just out of support for the people taking part. And again, there's a serious, clearly laid out involvement as she's protecting B5's defense grid from attack fighters, and we get to see a lot of the battle through her point of view. Severed Dreams includes a significant number of ships, and is an example of how a battle featuring a large number of ships within reason can be done very well. While there are a lot of ships in that battle, you can identify all of them, at least until the Minbari show up at the end. You know the names of those ships and what's going on. You even know the names of the captains of most of them. And it's made even better by the fact that it's a civil war or the start of one where everyone is having to fire on their own kind. There is no easy win here. It's all a very grim and dire situation. B5 also did a great job of restraining itself as a show with regards to space battles until this big moment. The first two seasons have intermittent battles that are largely just a few fighters rounding up some raiders and scaring them off or something. There is no big real battle until this moment. So when the hammer finally drops, it really, really is exciting stuff edge of your seat sequence. If you're doing a space battle in a visual medium, it should not be rapidly edited. It should have long exterior shots, moments of tension. It should be spaced out. This will actually save money on effects most of the time. You can have a lot of interior bridge shots and decision making. The Battle of the Mutara Nebula from Star Trek The Wrath of Khan is an excellent example. Tension, decision, movement, action, reaction. It's not just a giant colourful display of stuff happening. It builds the tension, it sets up the actions so that when something happens, it's a big important moment. Finally, to wrap this up, I'm going to describe two examples, both of which are from Star Trek Discovery. One of which is maybe the worst space battle ever put to screen, and the other is actually really, really great, and I'm surprised the same show did both of them. Uh, the good one is is the battle to save the USS Gagarin in what, one of the earlier episodes of season one. It's very straightforward, it's simple, it's well edited, it's got close-ups and high detail visuals of the ships involved, and it's got simple stakes. The Discovery uses the spore drive to try and rescue a Federation ship that is in trouble. We're told how many Klingon ships are attacking it, there are six. We get clear information about where the Discovery is, what it's doing, what the condition of the Gagarin is. The Gagarin has clear battle damage on its exterior model and on the bridge, it's not just shield numbers being shouted. And it ends with an exciting sequence where the Discovery throws itself into the path of some torpedoes to try and shield the Gagarin from harm, isn't entirely successful, and the Gagarin gets destroyed. It's a great slice of life for the Klingon war in this sequence. It sets up the episode really well. It's got sweeping camera angles and excellent incidental music and really sharp military dialogue. It looks great, and it's tense, and it doesn't go over the top, and it's just really, really well done. Great job. I wish they did this more. Alternatively, we have the Battle of Zaheir from the end of the second season of Star Trek Discovery, and this is just terrible. It's the Enterprise and the Discovery, who, which remain weirdly stationary for the entire battle, against like 50 miscellaneous Section 31 ships. Also, some Klingons and some Kelpians show up halfway through. Every ship has a million fighters, or like tactical attack flyers or something, that they launch. The Enterprise also launches all of its shuttles and work bees and lander probes and all of this stuff. In a situation like this, more is not really better, not just from a visual editing standpoint, but also from a tactical standpoint. If you launch a personnel shuttle in the middle of a giant space battle, it's just going to die. You've just wasted a personnel shuttle. You're not a tiny bit better off because that's out there. You're just worse off. You've lost your shuttle because it will not do anything useful. So we've got this giant soup of attack flyers fighting drones and ships firing at each other, and it has this giant like blue color filter over it that Discovery does all the time. Loads of of modern shows do this. I don't know what it is. Even The Expanse did it in season one and then seemed to get over it pretty quickly. But there seems to be this weird interest in, in blue color filters these days in space battles. Space isn't blue, and I'm surprised that so many people seem to have become vehemently convinced that it is. It makes everything a little more unclear, and especially when the shots aren't that long because fast editing is popular these days. You want to get as much out of these shots as possible and show off the details. I actually had the chance to see some of the earlier versions of the Donager battle from The Expanse when I was working on Force Recon, which didn't have that blue filter. And it's not like a measure to save money or anything, because the detail is all there without that filter. They're not trying to hide a, a sort of quickly made 3D model. It's all really, really good work. So I don't see why they need to, to put this filter over it that kind of diminishes the experience. But it's by far at its worst in Discovery at the end of the second season. You can barely see anything. It's this giant headache inducing soup, and there are blue particle effects going on along with it, so it's just all the same color. Again, the Battle of Zaheya basically breaks every rule I've laid out here. The threat to the individual characters on board the ships is not that good. Well, there is one sequence where they have a torpedo stuck inside the Enterprise. As an actual set piece for the episode, that's very good, but generally speaking, there isn't much ambient danger to the bridge crew, just the usual sparks and flickering and not much exterior change to the ships. And really, it's just a battle that could have worked with four ships in it. The Enterprise and the 
Discovery against two very impressive Section 31 ships. They could have been manoeuvring and thought and care and decision making and tension. It could have been slow and deliberate, like the Battle of the Mutara Nebula from Wrath of Khan, and the moments of success and failure would have been that much more impactful. We've even just had this in Star Trek Picard, which I really enjoyed all the way through, but we had a sequence at the end, mild spoilers, where the Romulans want to blow up a small village on the surface of a planet, so they send like 250 warbirds to do it, even though they're supposed to be on the back foot as a galactic power, so I'm not sure where they even got these ships from, and then when Starfleet goes to send people to stop them, they send another 200 ships, and then you've just got a million low-res ships on a screen at once, viewed from a great distance, and it just looks like nothing. Again, they could have sent two Romulan warbirds to do it, two Federation ships to stop them, tell us the names of everything, give us lots of interior shots, give us lots of maneuvers and sequences, do it all in higher res, because you can afford to do that when there's only a few ships, and it would have been 10 times better. I'm not saying large-scale battles can't be done well, the Battle of Endor is excellent, but compare the Battle of Endor to the Battle of Exegol from The Rise of Skywalker, and you'll see exactly why it's important to make sure you keep to these rules, because that goes from a well-lit big battle with interior fighter pilot shots and clear stakes and clear objectives and clear geography, to a giant blue mess being fought around some static Star Destroyers that they recycled the 3D model of. Too many space battles these days are either not putting in enough effort into making them work, or putting too much effort into the wrong things. Less is always more in these situations. Quality over quantity. That's why it's been almost 20 years and the Battle of New Caprica from Battlestar Galactica is still probably the best space battle ever put to screen, because it was two battle stars and four base stars and we knew what was going on and what ships could do what and how much danger they were in. I hope some of these new shows come to learn this lesson, and I hope if anyone is listening who intends to produce or write science fiction in the future will keep these rules in mind, because the genre needs more of this kind of thing done properly. And if you disagree with me or you have any other points you want to raise about how space battles should be done, please let me know in the comments below. This is a really interesting topic that I'd love to hear your thoughts about. But that's all from me. Thank you all for listening. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.